Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. I'm very excited to announce that we're going to be rolling out version 4.10 of the Blue Sky Plan software, and that is what you see on the screen in front of me. We're going to be rolling out a tremendous amount of new digital products and digital services, and the best way really to stay up to date is follow us on YouTube, search for Blue Sky Bio, and on Facebook, join the Blue Sky Bio user group. These are the two places where information gets pushed out first and to make sure that everybody stays in the loop. And there's a tremendous amount of free education available on these channels. And of course, via our website as well on blueskyplan.com, you could go ahead and click on education. And soon we're gonna be converting that to blueskybio.university where we're gonna be concentrating all the free educational information will be available via blueskybio.university. A few of the recent updates, we've recently announced blueskymonitoring.com, which is a new clinical dashboard to manage all your remote monitoring aligner cases. That's currently being offered free of charge. You can check it out on blueskymonitoring.com. You probably received an email like this, clinical aligner mentoring and aligner mentor to coach you through your initial aligner cases. Anyway, in short, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join the Facebook group, that is where the information is pushed out first and foremost. What really kills me is six months or a year or two years after we come out with something, somebody contacts me and says, oh, if only you had a feature or functionality that did X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, where have you been? We've had this out for years. If only you would have known about it. And Okay, so definitely join our Facebook group, follow us on YouTube, and make sure our newsletters are coming directly into your inbox. Okay, back to business. In this training tutorial, I'm going to be presenting the new splint module. The splint module allows you to create a splint. I'm gonna walk you through the super simple process. The current export fee is half of an export per jaw. So it's quick, it's inexpensive, and you get your splint done. The splint module is also our first module with an upgraded user interface. Um, so you'll be able to see that as we go through the tutorial. Okay, getting started with the splint module is super easy. Go ahead and click on splint. If you are asked to re-log in, go ahead and do so. This is because, number one, we're increasing the security of Blue Sky Plan, and number two, we're more closely connecting your Blue, your Blue Sky Plan registration to your Blue Sky BioDigital account, so it will be a single account. To simplify the process, we've made every possible way of logging in. So you could log in with your Google account or with Apple just by clicking either one. You can enter your email address or phone number. Phone number happens to be my personal favorite. I get um, a verification code sent to my cell phone. I put it in and I'm good to go. And of course, the same login account gives you access to all of our Blue Sky Bio digital products. Okay, I put in my cell phone. Literally a second later, I get my verification code. I put that straight in. I could click remember me if I want to stay in. And again, if I want to go back to additional sign in options, I have that option here. And I go ahead and click on login. Okay, I'm now logged into my account and I could continue using Blue Sky Plan. I could see that I'm logged in. My email address appears in the top right of the screen. Okay, now we're at the start screen to, desi to design the splint. We have two process flows that currently exist. The main difference between the process flows is the first one includes an anterior deprogrammer, and we can see that in the little image that we have here, and the second one does not. So we're going to choose the process flow for the anterior deprogrammer. What we've also incorporated more and more, and you're going to see this throughout the Blue Sky Bio Digital products, is the concept of patient and treatment. We want to keep the data organized by patients, so it'll be more organized for you in your Blue Sky Bio Digital account. And by the treatment, is he coming in for a crown? Is he coming in for an implant? Or was it an implant and now it's a crown? Or it's an aligner treatment? So we have the concept of patient and treatment. So it's super simple. If you have existing patients in any of your Blue Sky Bio digital products, you choose them from the drop down list. If not, then you just click the plus. You can enter a basic information and then go ahead and click on create. Email and phone is not relevant for most situations. However, if it's an aligner and you're gonna be going to monitoring for blueskymonitoring.com, then we definitely suggest putting an email and phone because the patient is gonna be contacted via email and phone, prompted with text messages and with emails, when to perform the scan, when to send it to you, and everything like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and choose our favorite patient, Sky Blue, treatment name, let's go ahead and just create a new one. By default, we populate it with the process flow and we'll call this uh, Sky's Splint Treatment. Okay, we could put in any description or notes that we want. Status, of course, obviously is, pen is new, 
start date is now and end date we could put in if we want we're going to click on create now we're good to go with our patient and our treatment we'll select the upper jaw and these are the default settings so if you want to make a change now you can make a change you'll be able to make a change later either way once you make a change it's saved in the system for a later time period we've also created the ability to share presets which we're not going to get into now i'll probably create another video on it but basically if for a particular treatment you think you like presets set to a certain setting and you want to share it with other users go ahead and share presets as well okay so these are some of the types of functionalities that we're introducing in our updated interface which we're seeing now with the splint so once I have this done, I'm going ahead and clicking on next. Okay, what we see now is our improved data import screen. This will help organize information better. The best way to deal with this is just to go to import models and go ahead and navigate, navigate to the relevant STL files or OBJ files. You could multi-select by holding down the shift key and the left mouse button and then go ahead and clicking on OK. Now the software will automatically organize the relevant information. The sections that we have here is that the top section is required data. It's the data that you must have in order to proceed. To create a splint, you must have a model. To create a surgical guide, you must have the CT and the STL. The optional data is exactly that. It's optional data. Okay, so it could be a buccal bite, it could be a dual bite. If you have particular data saved in a particular location other than what we just did, you could click the plus and select the relevant information. And then we have additional data. So if there's any other information that you dropped in and the software didn't automatically identify and organize, then it will show up in your additional data. And you could just drag it, grab it and drag it to the relevant section where it's supposed to go. Here also we have improved functionality in terms of visualization. So you could decide in the preview what you want to visualize. So if you want to see if the data file is correct, if you've selected the right one, if you want to see if they're aligned, you could go ahead and you could do this type of functionality directly on the data import screen. So once you've selected the relevant files to import, go ahead and click on next. And now we're ready to align the model to start the splint design and creation. So before we jump into that, let me just explain a few things in a high level about this new layout and user interface that we have here. So first of all, for splint, for example, we don't have a normal mode and an advanced mode. What we did is all the normal mainstream functionality that's going to show up, it's going to show up in the toolbar, in the panel on the left hand side, and underneath we're going to have, we have an advanced section. And the advanced section is hidden or it's rolled up by default. You could access advanced functionality just by clicking downwards and opening up that advanced functionality. All the visualization in terms of visualizing the models and their colors and hiding them you could control from right here. So you could see, first of all, you could control the transparency of the particular model. You could toggle it on and off. You could change the name, you could change the color. Of course, a lot of functionality could be done directly from right clicking on the model itself. What you should remember at this point is anything connected to the surfaces, their colors, their names, and their visibility and visibility in general, such as the grid, is all accessible from this drop-down that we have right here. The step-by-step -step process flow is exactly that. You'll be able to go through the steps in order to create whatever you're designing. And what we have on our right side are shortcuts to different things. So we have our Lab Pronto logo. We have this, which we call editing mode, and this will give you access to editing functionality or other functionality that's that's available at any time throughout the process. So we've also implemented this so if at any time during the process flow you want to smooth the model or edit the model, then you have the different capabilities that are available right here. And the editing button, you could toggle it on and off and that will give you access to tools that are available throughout. And you also have down here, leave editing mode, and that brings you back to the normal process flow. We also have things such as the screenshot functionality, which is here, and the ability to take notes and measurements, which are available here as well. So the right, the left panel are the tools that you'll need for the relevant step. The drop down that we have here is all your visibility. And what we have on the right are shortcuts to relevant and available tools. Okay, now we're at the model alignment stage that we all know and love from previous versions of Blue Sky Plan, where you mark three points on a horizontal plan and it aligns the model. 
And I did that by holding down the shift key and left clicking to mark the points. And throughout the Blue Sky Plan software, the functionality is the same. Generally, the mark points is holding down the shift button and left clicking. Okay, we can now see the model positioned on a grid in space. We could fine tune the alignment. We could adjust as we see fit. And of course, the mouse functionality is the same mouse functionality that we've had always in Blue Sky Plan. Okay, if we want to turn off that grid, we could do that through the visibility. And we could also see our key for the grid sizes in the top right. From here as well, by the way, we could toggle on and off our other surfaces. So if we want to align everything together, and we also have that ability through advanced move all models together, which is checked by default. Okay, once we're happy with our alignment, we go ahead and click on next. In our situation, the models upper and the lower are aligned already. But since we imported the buckle bytes, the software is automatically running the buckle byte alignment functionality. If you didn't import the buckle bytes, then this wouldn't be relevant. And you would just click on continue to the next step. There's actually a lot to be said about the buckle byte functionality. It's quite a powerful tool. You can align the lower model in different positions. You could see it move from byte to byte. You could see the collisions as it moves from byte to byte. And we have even more advanced functionality down below. But getting into that now would be a topic for a different video. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And our next step is to place our jaw articulator. Simply mark, and again, marking is by shifting and the left mouse button click, and the articulator is placed. You're able to open the jaw simply by increasing the mandible opening. This is important, especially if you're going to be creating a splint that goes to the cusp tips of the opposing arch. So this will be based on the opening between the two different jaws. Of course, you have the ability to close and to open to the opening that you did previously. You could remove the articulator and replace it. And then we have a lot of advanced settings in terms of the arm's length, base length, the bulk wheel angle, and other functionality there. So once we have our jaw open to the desired opening, go ahead and click on next, define insertion direction. Let's go ahead and define insertion direction from the view. Here we have undercut settings, maximum allow, allowed undercut. So we could go ahead and increase that. And all of these values, by the way, you can now use the arrows. You can now grab and drag. You could also just click on the value and just enter the desired value that you would like to put in. Click next, and now we're at the step that we could add an interior deprogrammer. And again, if you're not interested in creating a splint with an interior deprogrammer, then the fastest way of doing this is using the second process flow that we saw on the intro screen. But at this point, we'll present the functionality with the interior deprogrammer. Adding it is super simple. Just click the add button and the widget. Now we have a widget that we are used to in terms of movement. You could also click it again. And now you have a widget for resizing. So any of the dimensions that we have on the left hand side, you could resize on screen. Again, use the slider, enter the value that you want. Or as we mentioned earlier, use the presets function if you want to actually share your settings with another user. But whatever presets you use, the software will remember for the next time that you're using them. Once we're happy with our anterior deprogrammer, we could go ahead and click on next. So here we are actually drawing our splint curve. If we don't want to create an additional splint and we just want to work with anterior deprogrammer, then that's fine. We could just click on next and move on to the next step. If we want to design that splint in addition to the anterior deprogrammer, then we could go ahead and draw the relevant curve. I'm holding down the shift key and left clicking to mark the points. And if I want to rotate, I let go of the shift key and just use my left mouse button. So of course we go ahead and we close the curve. The green and orange dots that we saw when the curve was opened are now combined into a single blue dot. If we want to make any adjustments, then we could go ahead and edit the curve just by grabbing and dragging any of these dots. If we want to clear the curve, we have the clear curve button. Otherwise, we go ahead and click on next.
There are three ways in the software to define the splint thickness. We have the first option of raising to the antagonist cusp tips. We have the second option of raising to a visualized plane. And we have the third option of just creating the minimal thickness. So what we've implemented here is the ability to kind of preview or try out your splint in different views. We create a very rough rendering to show you how that will look. What this enables you to do right now is you could go ahead and make modifications in real time and it will regenerate and recompute the preview for you. So right now I'm using the functionality to, to raise the splint thickness to a, a visualized plane and I could see what my resulting splint would look like. If I want to switch and do it based on minimal thickness, I could go ahead and do that. And again, we're rendering a very quick preview for you so you could see how that will look. So at this point, if I want to make my splint a little bit thinner, I could go ahead and drop that down, let's say to 2.5. If I want to move my interior deprogrammer slightly, I could go ahead and do that. I could, of course, show my lower jaw I could open and close that through the quick access tools that we have on the right hand side. Once I'm happy with the draft of my splint, I could go ahead and click on next. And before going to export, we have the editing tools available once again as a step in the process flow. You could smooth, add remove materials, local deform, or resolve collisions. Again, you could open and close the byte. And once the splint is ready for export, go ahead and click on next. You have the ability to choose the export type. Your available credits are displayed here. You could select what you would like to export and then simply click on the export button. What I like to do is to export the upper and lower jaws together with the splint. I could save them as STL or OBJ. And then I use the option of export separated files to a folder. What this means, and we've had this in previous versions as well, if you're exporting multiple files, then each one will be its own STL file to a folder. If you're exporting just one file or multiple files, but you want them to be combined, then you would uncheck this checkbox. But let's go ahead and say export both jaws together with the splint. I'm going to go ahead and click on export. I save my files to exported files, new folder. Let's call this exported sky blue for the patient's name. And I will go ahead and click on OK. And I have my exported files folder from my desktop that's automatically synced to my bio big box account. And you could see our new design for BioBigBox, which is going live soon at betterdesign.biobigbox.com. You can also see it, of course, in your BioBigBox account at biobigbox.com. The Sync app could be downloaded and installed on your computer at no cost. Now, what this does is just makes the sharing and visibility of these files so super simple. So I have the files in my folder that I just exported. It's automatically synced and online to my account, which means I can access it from any computer at any time. If I wanna share the files with anybody, then I could do that with a click just by selecting the folder and clicking share from here or clicking share from here. And even more so, I could open them up in a viewer. I could, I could see them in our new blue sky viewer toggle them on and off, and I could easily create a view link as well. So I could copy the view link and just send it to somebody who I give access to. I could copy the share link and send it to somebody. And it's just a super easy way to share the files or share the view and enable somebody else to view the files.